going on everybody welcome back to another ad hoc video uh, today i will be talking to you about calendar date functions and then towards the end i will also reference our account functions that we learned about in the previous video so as always i invite you to log into the live site and follow along with me on your end now in this scenario um, we are going to build a very quick retention report card and we were only going to be looking at enlisted service members so you can see down below I've already added a filter MPC is equal to E. So only enlisted service members for this example. And some of the columns I've pulled over, I have full name, we have current rank, soldier home UIC. And then you can see I've pulled over ETS columns three separate times. So I have three different ETS columns. In two of these, I'm gonna show you how to insert those calendar date functions and turn them into formulas and manipulate this ETS uh, date field. Now, when we talk about functions and formulas in ad hoc, um, I like to relate it back to just basic Excel functions. So any of you who have had uh, previous Microsoft Excel experience, I like to think of ad hoc as just one giant Excel spreadsheet or giant Excel database. All the functions and formulas that we're used to in Excel, you can also do within ad hoc. We just got to figure out how to navigate or how to do it within this system. So in this scenario, I'm going to change the ETS date into a calendar year. So I wanna know how many ETSs are within each calendar year, which I think is a pretty common one that commanders would ask for. So to do that, we're gonna hover over our toolbar for one of our ETS columns, and I'm gonna select edit formula. Within edit formula, just like our count functions, we're gonna go down to insert function. And the subfolder we want is calendar date. Now you'll notice there's a number of different functions under calendar date, month, month of quarter, month name, so on. And within each function, it'll tell you exactly what it's looking for. So in this case, month name and insert an expression. An expression is defined as any expression that evaluates to a date. So just plug in a date and it'll pull the month name out of it. So for our example, we want year. So no different, just insert any expression that evaluates to a date. In this case, we're gonna insert our ETS date and it'll pull the year out of it. Select okay. This is what your formula should look like. And I'm just going to change my column heading to ETS year. Select OK. Now from the second column that we're going to change, I want to know how many days between today and the ETS date. So how many days left do I have until that service member ETS is? So again, hover over your toolbar, select edit formula, come down to insert function. And for this one, I'm looking for timestamp difference, timestamp difference. And you'll notice this one's a little bit more complex than the year function. It's looking for three items, the interval, an expression, and a timestamp. Now for our interval, you can see these are all the different intervals that I have to select from. I can do seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, so on. So for this one, I want days. So I'm going to double click where it says SQL TSI day. And I'm going to copy that interval. That's the interval that I'm going to paste into my formula. Select OK. I'm going to double click on interval and replace it with that SQL TSI day. So this is my interval. And now I need to plug in two dates for this formula to evaluate. Now a timestamp difference, you always want your first date in your formula to be the most recent. So in our scenario, we're gonna use current underscore date. That way, no matter when I open up this report, it's always gonna be operating off of that current date. And it's going to give me the difference in days between that day and the ETS date. 
I'm going to delete that timestamp two and the comma at the end. And this is what your formula should look like. Once again, I'm going to change my column heading, ETS days. And select OK. Check your results. And it should have pulled out the ETS year for every ETS date and how many days between today and that ETS date. This one becomes extremely valuable because now I can tell my commander how many I have within 30, 60, 90, 120, 180, so on and so forth. So I'm going to save my report real quick. And I'll just do a few basic things to edit my title view. We'll add a date timestamp. We'll add a quick image. And I'm just going to change the font. And I'll do the same to my date timestamp. So now what I want to do is I want roll up numbers for how many ETSs are within each calendar year. So I'm going to go back to my criteria tab. And I'm going to insert another ETS column. And I'm just going to apply a quick count function to the ETS column. So we'll come down to edit formula. Insert function. And I'm just going to insert a count function. So just count my ETS column. Change my heading. ETS count. And check my results. I'm going to change my format of my table real quick so it's not a scroll bar anymore. So now I have my ETS year function applied. I have my ETS day function applied, and it's counting my ETS rows. Now what I want to do is insert a quick pivot table. And I want to know how many ETSs are within each calendar year by UIC. Now, just like that count function video that we talked about, we can't have too many rows or too many columns in our pivot table. Otherwise, our measure is trying to count too many things. So I'm going to get rid of current rank. I'm going to get rid of ETS. I'm going to get rid of my ETS days and full name. And then I'm going to swap out my home UIC. So I want my home UIC to be my row. And I want my ETS date or ETS year to be my column. So here we have my home UIC is my row. ETS year is my column. And my measure is, is counting the ETS fields. And you can see here it's applied roll up numbers by UIC per calendar year. 22, 23, 24, so on. I can get my grand totals by coming down to my rows icon for totals and display after. And now I have total ETSs by calendar year. Apply a quick visualization graph to it. Now, being that this table is kind of large, I'm going to change the position of my graph. 
to display below my table. Select done. And now I can drag my new pivot table view into my layout. And this is what our quick retention report card looks like. So that timestamp difference function especially um, is extremely valuable. I've used it in evaluation reports for OERs into OERs. I've used it to compute time on station between the start date for an assignment and today. Um, I've used it to compute months, time and service. Um, you, you can go on and on and on. So timestamp difference and even the year function are two very basic but very valuable functions that are that you can use within your reports. And then obviously you can always incorporate the pivot table view by just adding that quick count function. So that's all we have for this quick video. Uh, once again, I hope, I hope you got something out of it. If you did, don't forget to give us a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on a future video. Thanks for tuning in and defend and serve.